Hi, I'm Paul Kilgren from GK Tuition, and in this video I want to talk to you about trigonometry. Now the question that I've chosen to go through here is 2019 paper 2 question 4. In this question we're asked to show that cos 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. Now the first thing you should do here is go to the formula in your log tables that says that cos a plus b is equal to the cos of a times the cos of b minus the sine of a times the sine of b. That's the first formula we're going to use. And I'm going to use it except instead of using cos a plus b, I'm going to use cos theta plus theta. The reason that's useful is because then the right hand side becomes cos theta cos theta minus sine theta sine theta. Then on my next line, cos theta plus theta gives me cos 2 theta because I just add the thetas together. Cos theta multiplied by cos theta is cos squared theta and sine theta multiplied by sine theta is sine squared theta. So now I'm left with this stage. And at this stage, I think when you're on this line, you should look at the answer. Ultimately, I want to end up with cos 2 theta is equal to 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. So obviously, I don't want any cos squareds in my answer. My right hand side has to be only sine squareds. Whenever you're trying to get rid of a cos squared or you're trying to get rid of a sine squared, you need to look at this formula, which is on page 13 in your log tables. It says that cos squared theta plus sine squared theta is equal to 1. And if I, I've identified I'm trying to get rid of my cos squared theta, which means that I'm just going to manipulate this formula. I'm going to isolate cos squared theta. And I know that cos squared theta is the same as 1 minus sine squared theta. Now I can just sub that in instead of my cos squared theta. So my left hand side will stay the exact same, cos 2 theta. My right hand side, instead of cos squared theta, I'm going to sub in 1 minus sine squared theta. And then I'm also going to keep my last term, which was a minus sine squared theta. And obviously now my last two terms on the right hand side are like terms. And they're going to add together to give me minus 2 sine squared theta. And that's the final answer. That's what you were asked to prove at the start. In the second part of this question, we're asked to find the cosine of the acute angle between the diagonals of a cube. You'll notice here that on my diagram, I've labeled the, the, rec, the square that's facing me as A, B, C, D. I just, for reference, it'll be easier if we label them. So I'm calling that A, B, C, D. If A is one corner, I've labeled the opposite corner over here as E. And if B is one corner, I've labeled the opposite o corner over here as F. Now, clearly the diagonals, the internal diagonals, are the distance from B to F and the distance from A to E. And I'm looking for the cosine of the angle between these two, two diagonals, this one. So obviously the first thing I need to do is I need to try and figure out what the diagonal, the distance from A to E is, or the distance from B to F is. Our obvious problem here is we don't have any lengths or any distances whatsoever. So we need to label them as something. Remember, if it's a cube, all the lengths are the same. I could say the distance from A to B is X, the distance from B to D is X, D to C is X, A to C, all of those, all the sides are X, are the distance X. That's our starting point because we need to start off with something. Now, our goal needs to be to find the distance from A to E or the distance from B to F. In other words, to find the internal diagonal of this cube. However, before I do that, I need to first look, it's impossible for me to do it at the moment. So before I do that, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to just take one of the squares facing us. For example, let's say the square A, B, C, D, the one that's facing us here. I know that all the distances are X. So the first thing I want to do is I want to find the diagonal, the distance from A to D. In other words, the external diagonal of one of the faces of the cube. If I can find the external diagonal of one of the faces of the cube, I'll be then able to work out what the internal diagonal, the distance from A to E is. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to wipe out this diagram and we're just going to take the square A, B, C, D and we're going to try and find the, the, the external diagonal or in other words, the distance from A to D. Okay, it's relatively straightforward to find in terms of x, the distance from A to D. If I've labeled AB as x and I've labeled BD as x, you should view the triangle ABD as a right angle triangle. If you know two sides in a right angle triangle, you can use Pythagoras theorem to find the third side. So that's what I did here. I said that AD squared, which is a hypotenuse, 
is equal to x squared plus x squared. In other words, the, this hypotenuse squared is equal to that side squared plus that side squared. And if you simplify this down, you just end up with AD is equal to the square root of 2 times x. With that in mind, let's go back to our original diagram and figure out how can we find the internal diagonal AE. Okay, just remember our goal is to find the angle between the two diagonals. The diagonals being the distance from A to E and the distance from B to F. Now what we worked out, what we worked out previously is we worked out the external diagonal. In other words, the external diagonal, don't think of the 3D shape at all, just think of the square that's facing us. The square A, B, C, D. The square facing us, the external diagonal we've worked out is the square root of 2. I want you to realize that that is the external diagonal of all the faces of this square. So I worked out that the distance from A to D, the external diagonal is root 2x. So by extension, I could also say, I want you to view the square on the bottom. I've labeled this as B, this is D, this is E, and I suppose we could label that as G. The square on the bottom is B, G, D, E. Okay, the, one of the diagonals is the distance from B to E. Okay, that's one of the external diagonals. And from the previous part of the question, I've worked out that all the external diagonals are root two times x. The very first thing we did was we labeled all the distances as x. So I could say the distance from A to B is x, or all the sides as x. So now what I want you to look at is look at the triangle A, B, E, okay? And think about, now you have to visualize this in terms of a 3D shape. If I take the triangle A, B, E, A is the top of the cube, B is the bottom of the cube, and then E is directly across at the bottom. B and E are both on the base of the cube, while A is at the top. So the point I'm trying to make here is that the angle A, B, E is a right angle. It's a 90 degree angle. I know from the previous part that the distance A, B is X, and the distance B, E is root 2, X. So now I know two sides in a right angle triangle, I can use Pythagoras theorem to find the third side. Remember the third side, the distance AE is the internal diagonal, it's the distance from one corner to the far corner of the cube. So let's just use our Pythagoras theorem now. So this is very similar to the last one. I know the distance from A to B, in other words the top of the cube to the bottom of the cube is X. I know the external diagonal, the distance from one corner to the far corner along the bottom is root 2x. And AE, if you look at your original diagram, AE is the internal diagonal. The distance from one corner to the far corner, one corner at the top to the opposite corner at the bottom. Now I know two sides in a right angle triangle in terms of x, so I can use Pythagoras theorem to find the third side in terms of x. Obviously in this case your hypotenuse is AE. So you could say that AE squared is equal to x squared plus root 2x to be squared. If you simplify that down, you end up with AE is root 3x. So now we finally have the distance in terms of x of the internal diagonal of the cube. So let's go back to our diagram and think about how we're going to get the answer to the question now. Okay, so let's look at our diagram now. Again, I've labeled the same things. I've labeled A, B, C, and D is the, rect is the square facing me. And then E is diagonally opposite A and F is diagonally opposite B. So we have just worked out that the internal diagonal, the distance from the top at A to the opposite and the bottom at E is the square root of 3x. That's the internal diagonal. Now I need you to recognize that the, the, there's two internal diagonals, or there's a number of internal diagonals, but the ones I'm concerned with are the distance from A to E and the distance from B to F. So B to F is also an internal diagonal. If this is a cube, then the distance from B to F has to be the same as the distance from A to E. So I could also say that the distance BF is root 3x. Now, the question here is, we're trying to find the cosine of the angle between the, two, between the two diagonals. In other words, we're basically trying to find this angle. Think of it as trying to find this angle, we're just going to end up with the cosine of it. I know the distance from A to E is root 3x. Now clearly the two diagonals are going to intersect at the midpoint. The two diagonals are going to bisect each other. Or in other words, they're going to cut each other in half. 
So if the distance from A to E is root 3x, the distance from A to the point of intersection here will be half of that. Half of root 3x is root 3 over 2x. I know the distance from B to F is root 3x, and I so the point of intersection that bisects it, that means this is the midpoint, half of root 3x, the distance from B to here is root 3 over 2x. The very, very first thing we said was the distance from A to B is x. So I want you to look at this now. What we're concerned with now is just a triangle. Let's label this point of intersection as O. Okay, and look at the triangle A, B, O. I know all three sides of this triangle in terms of x. If you know the three sides of a triangle, you can use the cosine rule to find the angle. So we're going to use the cosine rule to find the cos of this angle. Okay, so we've boiled it down to the triangle A, B, O, where I've labeled A as the top of the cube and B is directly below it at the bottom. So the distance from A to B, we're calling each one of those distances X. And O is the point of intersection of the two diagonals, the point of intersection of the diagonals that we've worked out. So I know the distance from A to O is root 3 over 2X, and from B to O is root 3 over 2X. So you should recognize you have three sides in the non-right angle triangle. If you have three sides in a non-right angle triangle, you can use the cosine rule in order to work out the cos of the angle. So, I'm trying to find the angle AOB, which means that's, remember your cosine rule is A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cos A. So the angle that we're looking for is the angle A, which means when we sub in for the small a, it has to be the side opposite the angle we're looking for. If we're looking for this angle, then this needs to be my A. And then B and C are interchangeable, so I can just label this one as B and this one as C. Now, if you know the three sides and you're looking for the angle, you're better off to, to, to rewrite your formula. I wouldn't sub in at this point. This is what's in the, log, in the maths tables, but I wouldn't sub in here. What you should do is try and isolate your cos A first. So you'll notice what I did is I subtracted minus B squared and minus C squared from both sides. And then at this stage, I wanted to isolate my cos A. So I divide both sides by minus 2BC which means that cos A works out as A squared minus B squared minus C squared over minus 2BC. And that's the formula I'm going to sub into, where A is X, B is root 3 over 2, X, and C is root 3 over 2X. So in this line, all I did was, so I just subbed in. And then root 3 over 2X to be squared is 3 quarters. So both of these, this becomes X squared minus 3 quarters X squared minus 3 quarters X squared. On the bottom, all I've done here is multiplied the root 3 over 2x by root 3 over 2x, and I got 3 quarters x squared. So now we can just simplify this down and find the cosine of the angle AOB. Okay, it's simple enough to finish this one off now. I have x squared, 1x squared minus 3 quarters minus 3 quarters gives me minus a half x squared. And on the bottom, I have minus 2 by 3, 3 over 4x squared becomes minus 3 over 2x squared. The x squared on the top, x squared on the bottom divides into the x squared on the top and I just get 1, so they're eliminated. And then minus a half divided by minus 3 halves is equal to 1 third. So your final answer there is just 1 third. The cos of the angle AOB, or in other words, the cos of the angle between the diagonals of a cube is 1 third. Notice that it did not ask you to find the angle. So I don't need to continue and get cos inverse of a third. I was just asked to find the cosine of the angle. The answer to that is one third. So I hope all of this video makes sense. If you're unsure of any of that or you'd like me to clarify it, just let me know in class or send me an email and I'll try and explain it differently.